Even in the regular uh, lacrosse league, the guys still have to have a second job. I mean, this is like, you know, old time sports from years ago where you know, the players play football and then, uh, you know, they're selling insurance in the offseason. Yep. Well, this is the same way it is for a lacrosse player. But now uh, there's more money involved. This new league, the Premier Lacrosse League, the players will be full time. They will get health benefits and they will get equity. So it seems the selling point here is all the things you've been asking for come to our league and we can give it to you. It seems as if Paul has his ear to what the players have been asking for. And if you don't have the name brand players in lacrosse, you don't got the best guys in the world, it's just not going to work. We don't have to do anything. We choose to do everything. So why did you choose to start PLL? I've been playing lacrosse for 20 years. I'm 32. I picked up my first stick when I was 12. I've been playing professionally for more than 10 years. So that means professional lacrosse has consumed the majority of my playing days. It's given me opportunity to grow personally, professionally, win championships, meet new teammates, meet and forge great bonds with coaches, but I've also been one of the very few full-time professional lacrosse players. And while that's been very fulfilling for me and have opened up so many doors professionally, it's also encouraged me to step back and say, hey, why aren't more players full-time? For our sport to take the next step, we need our best players in the world on field and supported financially, supported with the right resources so that they can take the game to the next level. Everything that we're building in the Premier Lacrosse League is about the players first. Being a professional athlete is an unbelievably challenging lift. The workload is endless. The amount of mental fortitude that you have to have to persevere through injury, through loss, there are many athletes agnostic to sport who have played 15 years in the NBA or the NFL or the NHL and they've never won a championship. The sacrifice of being a professional athlete is immense. And our players take on that same type of sacrifice. And for the longest time, they've been part-time. For the longest time, they've been underpaid. And it's time that our professional game takes the next step to fully support its players as this is a league that's being built by the players. We're here in Hollywood at campus at Uninterrupted media platform that LeBron James and his business partner Mav Carter built to give the voice back to the athlete. It matches well with what we're doing right now, which is all the best players in the world coming together, building a new league, unlocking commercial viability, connecting with fans, distributing across mass platforms like this. So let's go. Thanks. Hi. Hey. I'm Natalie. Natalie and Paul. Which one's Hawk like to sit in? This one? Which, which one you like, Hawk? It don't matter. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, man. Pick the corner, bro. <laughs> when your name comes up, I'm always like, he is the most like forward thinking athlete or one of the most forward thinking athletes that I've ever met or been able to follow. Um, and we do things like we go to MIT yes. Sloan and we're sitting there and while we're talking and you know, we have the same reps, billionaire owners are coming up, talking to him like, oh, hey, Paul. And he's, he's on a first name basis with some of the most powerful people in the sport. When we think about what we can do and how we can build something of this size, it comes down to team. Yeah. There's so many crossover skill sets from being a professional athlete that you take into the boardroom. And the first one was something of this size. It's like, there's no way this is happening on my own. Yeah. Just no, no way, right? So I was lucky to have a brother who's a serial entrepreneur, who's been in Silicon Valley for seven years and invested in operated companies for his entire life. Mm -hmm. 
You know, we were lucky to get the right support from a capital standpoint, so we get intros to an executive team. We have brought folks in from the NFL, from Spartan Race, the NBA, from financial technology services. None of this happens alone, and especially without the players. Yeah. And so early days, this idea doesn't even begin to build without player buy-in. Right? So you sit down and say, hey, we're disrupting the model, we're creating something different. We get our rocket fuel from the players. Yeah. And there's, to your point, like the players that play professional lacrosse, I think, are and have been more than an athlete by necessity and now by taking ownership. B, you're a pioneer. You are more than an athlete, man, and I appreciate you. This is a sport that competes at a very high level across universities in the U.S., has adoption across at the high school level, uh, cross-gender, is the only sport over the last 15 years that has grown year over year at the participatory level. So this sport has product market fit. It just hasn't unlocked its potential at the professional level. Like we're building something that people know. We're having to rediscover a lot, but we're gonna tell the stories of our athletes. We're going to get the game distributed across national television and on screens of all sizes. And we're gonna to try to do what UFC did to MMA to lacrosse. So we look at where we are now as from a timing perspective, the only time to build a professional lacrosse league. Despite the fact that it is daunting, is this a dream job? Is founding PLL the culmination or, or the next step in, the, in your development as a professional in such a way that you, know, you find a tremendous amount of redeeming emotion? Hmm.